Hey, you can hear me. Um, hi, I am Steve. Uh, I uh, <laughs> uh, am I'm very excited to be here at DICE, as Martin mentioned. It's the first time I've ever been here. Um, so thank you, everyone, for, for having me um, to talk about uh, Gone Home and its place in the changing indie landscape. Um, I was the writer and designer of Gone Home. Um, it was a first-person exploration game. It was on PC. We actually, speaking of David, we made it with uh, Unity, and we actually used Ultimate FPS camera uh, in the game as well. Um, and uh, it was the first game uh, released by the Fulbright Company, which is a company that I co-founded with Carla Zamanja and Janaman Nordhagen back in 2012. Um, so we're an indie studio. We're in Portland, Oregon. Um, and before we went indie, before we started working on Gone Home, um, we worked together on Bioshock 2 at 2K Marin, um, and I was the lead designer and writer of Minerva's Den, the DLC for that game, and I then left and went to Irrational and was a level designer on Bioshock Infinite for a year uh, before going indie. So um, since then, uh, you know, we, we spent about a year and a half making the game. We released it. Um, we're very, very grateful that it's had a strong reception. Um, it's up for some awards, uh, including at the awards tomorrow night, so uh, fingers crossed. Um, but you know, we, we are also um, have received a number of awards already, Polygon's Game of the Year, and um, good review scores. And I know that this is like a biz conference, so like uh, we pushed a bunch of units. Um, we've done like a quarter of a million copies. Uh, this is us selling more than Saints, Gro Saints Row on our uh, launch week and selling more than Batman on our first 50% off sale. So Steam is good, uh, <laughs> especially when um, this is the entire full-time team that made the game, right? Um, four people made Gone Home, and, um, and, and, and we couldn't be happier. Um, but the great thing is um, that more important than any one game, um, this story is not unique at all these days, right? There are tons of indie games made by very small teams um, that have really broken through and become part of the, the, the gaming consciousness and, and you know made a ton of money so people can make their next game. Um, basically, making games this way is more viable than ever. This is just a few examples you know, that, that I'm using, but you can think of a dozen more over the last five years that have come out and um, become part of what we think of when we think of what is a game, what do people care about, what are people buying and playing. Um, you know, there are a lot of reasons for that. Um, as mentioned, Unity was the, unit, that was the, uh, the engine that we used. Um, there's a game maker and Twine. The means of production are becoming more accessible than ever to people to make these smaller games that can reach an audience through, obviously, digital distribution, which for us, Steam is the most important. Clearly, there have been a lot of people for which console has been incredibly important. That these things can bypass retail and get straight to the players who hear about the game because of social networking, because their friends tell them it's good. And you, you make a niche game like Gone Home, right? Like Gone Home is a game where you just walk around a house uh, and it has a lot of reading in it, um, which is not necessarily a great pitch for like making a bunch of money off a video game. But when you make a very niche experience, these kinds of uh, channels allow the entire niche to find it. Um, so, okay, so uh, why does that matter? Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's not like rocket science. This is the trend that we're in the middle of. We've seen this a lot. Um, I mean, I'm not just here to say like, hooray, everybody quit your job, make an indie game. Like, jump in, the water's fine, right? Um, but on the other hand, I feel like, you know, I've seen some, um, some kind of hand-wringing about like, an indie, you know, bubble. Um, you know that that this is the has grown too much, and that the bottom is going to fall out of indie games. People are going to stop buying as many of these risky, smaller products because it's oversaturated. Um, that the audience is going to go away. So I, I I'm dubious of that. Um, partly because, for instance, Steam added 10 million new active users between October of last year and January of this year. Um, they got 75 million active users right now, and these are all gamers who downloaded this thing to buy video games. Um, so I think the audience, if anything, is actually growing. Um, that's another good thing. But that said, um, I do think we're in the middle of a sea change. You know, I think that we have seen all of these games that are 
this first wave of indie breakthrough success into the wire industry. It's what we've been witnessing, and I feel like we are on the crest of this first wave of indie breakthroughs. Um, I think that's really gonna mean something for people who are working on their first indie game now that they wanna put out in the next few years that they need to break through to the, to the gamer consciousness as well. Um, because, you know, when the first wave of these big indie breakthroughs were coming out, all they really had to worry about was AAA, right? Like, it was 2008, whatever, and, you know, people are buying Assassin's Creed and Mass Effect and Grand Theft Auto and Bioshock, and, uh, I don't know, Guitar Hero? Rock Bands, 2008, nine? Um, but, you know, they're, they're, there's, there's this value proposition. If we know you're spending 60 bucks on this, 70 bucks on this, but we're this very small, agile, different experience, um, and, and take a chance on us, you know? It's, it's 10 bucks, your friends are saying it's, it's really cool. Try something different. And so it was really very big. Uh, you know, the, the gamers consciousness was focused on that um, versus this new phenomenon, I think, of these indie games that were seen as, you know, high quality, as being an experience along the lines of something that you would expect from a larger production, you know, emotionally, or um, just as, as far as being something new that you've never played before that's also done really well. Um, and so the thing that I think is happening now um, that is going to make things interestingly different for indies that are trying to break in in the next few years is that the people who made these games um, are now making their follow-ups. Um, and these follow-up games are being presented, marketed, you know, promoted, and, and I think perceived um, much differently than the first wave um, when, when they hit and were just sort of a surprise. There was no expectation, right? Expectations are very high for the follow-up games from this first wave of indie breakthroughs. And I mean, we're seeing this in big ways, right? Like Jonathan Blow, who created Braid, he was up on stage at the Sony press conference at E3, um, you know, showing the first footage of, of The Witness up there on stage in front of thousands of viewers. Similarly, at that same press conference, the guys from Supergiant who created uh, Bastion, they were up there, you know, all they had, as far as the public was aware, before this press conference was a title and some concept art. Um, and they came up here and the first gameplay ever of this game, still created by a very small studio, I think they're like 10 people, um, was debuted in front of uh, the worldwide audience of E3. Uh, I mean, scale-wise, this is um, the witness projected on the side of a skyscraper um, at a press event. Like, this is stuff that, that indie developers were not seeing. Um, this is Mike Bithell. He created Thomas Was Alone. Thomas Was Alone um, was a Unity game. It was one-person production. It was about like squares and rectangles jumping around and it had like a narrative and it, it really connected with people but the smallest kind of production you could imagine breaking through. This is a photo of him announcing the story and setting of his next game, Volume, in a gallery um, inside a freaking castle. Uh, his story is based on Robin Hood for his next game and they rented out part of Nottingham Castle uh, to tell people that. Um, and then uh, the developers of Amnesia, The Dark Descent, um, they teased their next game, Soma, with a series of live action teaser trailers. Um, and I don't know about you, but when I think indie, I don't necessarily think high production live action teaser trailer. But this is the world that we're stepping into, right? Like, um, and I mean, again, numbers, right? Like uh, at, at, at IndieCade last year, Greg Kasevin, who worked on Bastion, said that uh, they've sold almost two and a half million copies of that game. Um, Jonathan Blow has estimated that the approximate uh, budget for The Witness is $4 million, which is like, again, that's not a AAA budget, but it's sure not something that indies were contending with um, in the past. And by contending, I both mean the developers of those games are making much bigger games, and that's something to deal with internally, but also, whereas in the first wave of indie success, they just had to deal with the big guys, now indies are much more in direct competition with each other. If you're an indie, you're, you're, you're not just trying to get some mind share away from retail games, you're also saying, 
I know that you're excited about Transistor. You played Bastion. You want to play their next game. You should be paying attention to me as well. And I mean, as noted, uh, I don't think the audience itself, numbers-wise, is going away. I think it's growing. Um, but I don't think that the press's bandwidth is getting much larger. Um, there's only so much news that can go out in a day. And all these indies that, that are established and are doing their follow-up, they're presumed to be newsworthy. They get a news story, right? Because you're excited about, about their next game, um, which is just going to make it that much harder for people that are trying to get attention for the first thing that they're ever making. Um, and so you know, I, I said earlier that I don't think that the bottom is falling out of the industry, um, but I think the middle has fallen out of it. Um, you may remember, for instance, um, uh, again, in 2008, 2009, maybe, no, it must have been earlier, um, BioWare Pandemic was acquired by EA. Um, BioWare released Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Pandemic released The Saboteur. Um, and then BioWare Pandemic became just BioWare. Um, and that was like, that's, that's just indicative of a trend that we saw over those years of these middle tier commercial studios that were publisher funded started to be pushed out, right? There were the, the AAA games that were bigger budget than ever and had to make a bigger profit than ever, and then these small indies that were coming up from, from the bottom end. And I mean, I should know, right? Like, uh, I worked at 2K Marin. We, worked, we made Bioshock 2. I worked at Irrational. Uh, they made Bioshock Infinite. Um, 2K Marin is maybe not around anymore either. And it's that, that is this band of game development that has, for all intents and purposes, disappeared. Um, and I would say, uh, in its place, since the industry abhors a vacuum, um, these breakthrough indies have filled in that middle ground, right? And so now it's no longer so unbalanced between tiny grassroots indies that are one or two people with no budget and massive corporate productions. Um, the, the playing field is much more even. Indies are filling up the, the space that was left over between those two sides of the spectrum. Um, so again, you know, what does this mean? Um, I think that what it means is, you know, in the in the next in this this coming generation um, of of game development, we're going to see um, a lot of indies that are are competing more directly with each other for the attention of the audience, for the attention of the press, um, and that these new indies that don't have an existing title to, to, to be kind of their calling card, they're going to have to be more indie than indie, right? Like those techniques of being smaller, more agile, more interesting, more creative, basically more surprising, showing us things we've literally never seen before is going to be all the more important to get some of that attention because the audience has so many more choices now than ever. Um, so, you know, that said, um, I don't personally really like thinking of indies as fighting with each other, as being in competition. I mean, there are hard realities, right? Like, I mean, this is what I've been talking about. But on the other hand, um, there are still differences between being in the indie space and, and being in, the, in the, the commercial space. And I think that you know, part of it is that, OK, a, as an example, um, when we were making Gone Home, we applied for a, uh, a tech incubator, like an accelerator program grant thing. Uh, we didn't get it. Um, and, and the reason why, in part, could be because one of the questions on there was, who are your main direct competitors for your product? Um, and you know, I, I thought about it and I replied, I don't feel like as an indie game developer I have competitors. I feel like I have a community, right? I have peers. All of the indies in this space, whether they're the smallest or whether they, they have more resources, more advantages, I think that we all do want success for each other. Um, and I think that we can be a part of that. Um, because that's the other side of the equation for me, is not just that indies that are trying to break in now are going to have to fight twice as hard to get there, but that you know, those of us who are fortunate enough that the press and the fans are excited about the next game from the creator of X now have additional power to be able to 
funnel some of that attention to these smaller projects that are exciting, that are surprising, that could get lost in the shuffle, and we, as you know, people that are, for instance, on a stage at Dice, <laughs> um, can can be part of that solution to make sure that the the, the most exciting new games are getting the attention that they deserve, um, because you know we are strangers in a strange land. Um, this is unexplored territory, um, but we can figure out how to navigate it if we work together. Uh, I'm Steve. Thank you. Appreciate it.